So sign language is a, is a different language than a spoken language. American Sign Language has no more relationship to English than it does to French or Chinese, which is to say it has no relationship to any of those languages. And British Sign Language has no relationship to English either, and British Sign Language and, and American Sign Language um, uh, are probably more related than any other. Uh, so sign languages are more related to each other, um, but they're also quite distinct. So uh, it, what, what follows from that is that the not, it's not just different words, different ways to make words. It's different syntax. It's different grammar. It's, it's a different structured, differently structured language, which means that a person who is a native sign language speaker will not understand the uh, the spoken language of the, of the place where they live. They are going to be extremely poor at it. it. They have no link to it. They've never heard it. It's not their language. It's, um, it, so it's very hard for them to learn. They don't learn it. And there really aren't any native signers that, uh, native deaf signers who are, who speak, um, a spoken language. So the, our best accounts of this are from hearing people who speak sign language. And the best of the best, I believe, is this w work by um, Lou Ann Walker, A Loss for Words. And she was a hearing child born of deaf parents. Uh, she's fluent in sign language and, and obviously also fluent in, in uh, English. Um, and she really conveys the feeling of how different the languages are in, in their expressivity and, the, in, and how different the communities are that, that use English and use sign language. And this other book by Oliver Saxstein, Voices, really emphasizes the importance of, uh, of, a, of a young individual for, for proper development. They have to have a mode of com communication. And the most natural mode for a deaf baby is signing. Now, there are certainly instances where people have learned oralism. Typically, they learn that oralism if they go deaf postlingually. So for you, as physicians, what, what are important things to remember about sign language? Uh, first of all, it's, um, it's a different language. They're not going to understand English. Um, uh, they're not even necessarily going to be able to lip read. Some of them might be able to lip read to a certain extent, but not um, uh, not entirely. Um, they, a person who is can communicate only by sign, sign language, a deaf person who signs, cannot overhear. And in the overhearing are the social norms. Both um, Michael Korost and Barbara Stenross, Barbara Stenross being a person who has difficulty overhearing because of hearing loss, and Michael Koros because he's uh, also because of hearing loss and eventually uh, getting uh, a cochlear implant. Um, it's that it's that overhearing the the conversations that tell you what's really going on, um, overhearing things that you shouldn't hear, and so there's a social impact of not being able to overhear. The the other uh, other considerations, um, one is that uh, people that are deaf um, and depend on sign language cannot hear cars coming. They cannot hear falling objects. So they are in danger. They're in danger of not hearing a honk, of not um, hearing something rattling down the street coming barreling for them. They can't hear, they can't hear and use hearing to detect impending danger. In a medical setting, there are very few sign language interpreters. This makes treating individuals who are dependent on sign language uh, for communication, it makes treating these individuals much more difficult. And finally, in the medical setting, there are many situations where one or both of the hands are used, one or both of the arms are used for medical interventions, such as IV tubes. And doing that is basically
putting your hand over somebody's mouth. You are making a signer mute by uh, restricting movement of, of one or both hands. So it's a very important thing to remember as you, as you go through your practice and you encounter uh, individuals who are dependent on sign for communication. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about speech production.